What is up? It's NFL Week 7. I'm Ryan Weiss, and this is Club Fantasy's Stream of the Week. That's right, Week 7, or how it's not so lovingly being referred, the Bipocalypse. If you've never considered streaming before, you probably found your way to this video because your favorite players are either hurt or not playing this week. Uh, just a quick recap of what I do. I'm going to give you my top five plays at quarterback, tight end, and defense that were all available in at least or around 50% of leagues on Yahoo as of Wednesday after waivers have run. Uh, before we dive into this week, let's do a quick recap of week six. So it's not my best week, not my worst week. If you started all three of my streams of the week, you got 29 fantasy points. I'd like to see a little bit more than that. That's about the low end of average. So we're going to strive for better. Uh, last week, only one out of my five quarterbacks hit in my stream of the week, who was Taylor Heinke, missed for the second straight week. At tight end, we did much better. Three out of five. Zach Ertz in game one. There was no game two. Zach Ertz crushed it as the stream of the week at tight end. And on defense, I continue to dominate four out of five last week, including the Packers beating up on the Bears to be another hit for the stream of the week. So let's jump into this week. I always go in reverse order. So my fifth option at quarterback is going to be Jimmy Garoppolo, if he plays, taking on the Indianapolis Colts. Garoppolo has actually looked good. They've been, when both were healthy, they were using Trey Lance more as a surprise attack. So I expect Jimmy Garoppolo to be able to put some yards up like we saw J Lamar Jackson do not that long ago. I think we're going to see a nice game out of Garoppolo. Debo Samuel has just been a revelation and a weapon. So I think he's going to be a good play this week. Number four, another if he plays, if you've been following the rumors, Tua Tagovailoa taking on the Atlanta Falcons. Putting it bluntly, Tua looked pretty good in the game in London against Jacksonville, and Atlanta doesn't have a very good defense. I think Atlanta's going to be able to score on Miami, thus making this a higher scoring game. Tua's going to have to throw the ball, and I think he's going to do well with it. Number three is going to be Daniel Jones taking on the Carolina Panthers. I hate picking anybody against the Panthers, and their name may come up again later, but Jones does enough with his legs to keep himself as a solid streamable option. Number two is going to be Sam Darnold taking on the New York Giants. Darnold's just over 50% available, or just under 50% available, but go look for him. The Giants are Swiss cheese defense. Darnold's going to bounce back this week. I think we see him rush the ball a little bit better. Still no Christian McCaffrey back. But more importantly, I think there's going to be an emphasis on his wide receivers catching the ball. Robbie Anderson, DJ Moore, a ton of drops last week. He would be number one if not for that, but Teddy Bridgewater is going to be my number one. And again, there's another questionable tag here, but I think Bridgewater goes against a very hurt Browns team. I think Cortland Sutton's going to have a good day. Tim Patrick's going to have a good day. Noah Fant's going to have a good day. I don't think the Browns offense is going to be able to do a whole lot with no Baker Mayfield, no Nick Chubb, no Kareem Hunt, potentially no Odell Beckham. It's not going to be a great day for the Browns, and I think it's going to be a solid day for Teddy and the Broncos. Moving over to tight end, we're going to start with number five. That's Anthony Ferkser taking on the Kansas City Chiefs. It's hard to love Anthony Ferkser. He had a little bit of hype coming into the season, but the Chiefs are awful against the tight end. I believe they give up the fourth most fantasy points to the tight end position. You're hoping for a catch and a touchdown, and this could be the week for Ferkser to do that. Number four is going to be Evan Ingram taking on those Carolina Panthers. Again, I hate picking against good defenses, and Carolina's relatively good against the tight end. But the Giants have so many injuries at wide receiver. Ingram's been seeing a steady five targets per week since he's come on. That's all you can really hope for when you're streaming tight ends. Number three is going to be Cole Komet. Again, five target guy going up against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers who give up a ton of points to the tight end. I believe the eighth most in fantasy football. Komet is starting to build a little bit of rapport with Justin Fields while his wide receivers technically aren't. I believe you're going to see him lean on Komet in this game, especially if Levante David misses another game. It's going to be an interesting matchup there. The Bears should have to throw a lot. Number three is going to be C.J. Uzoma taking on the Baltimore Ravens. Uzoma has scored three touchdowns in the last three weeks, two, three weeks ago, and then one this past week. He's not seeing a ton of volume, but Baltimore, another bad team against the tight end. And number one is going to be Ricky Seals-Jones taking on the Green Bay Packers. Green Bay's defense, not great. Ricky Seals-Jones has been seeing six to eight targets every game since he's taken over for Logan Thomas. The Washington football team's wide receivers are still having injury issues. I believe this is going to be another game where Jones is going to be relied heavily on, and I think he finds the end zone. I think he's a nice 14-point option this week. 
We're going to slide over to defense. Number five is going to be the Cincinnati Bengals taking on the Baltimore Ravens. The Bengals defense has been better than you think they have, and they've been great about getting after the quarterback. You need to hope Lamar Jackson doesn't go off in this game, but you have very limited options in defense with only 26 teams playing this week and six of those being gone off of the main slate right away. It's going to be an interesting week when it comes to fantasy defenses. Number four is going to be the Las Vegas Raiders taking on the Philadelphia Eagles. Philadelphia hasn't been able to get a lot going on offense, and the Raiders have been doing a pretty damn good job of getting after the quarterback on defense. I think you're going to need to see that in this game. They got to pressure Jalen Hurts. We know the Eagles won't run the football unless it's Hurts doing it. So they're going to have to contain him to keep them off the scoreboard which leads me to number three. It's going to be those same Philadelphia Eagles taking on the Raiders. We've seen Derek Carr really cool down since his very hot start. And the Eagles defense, especially in pass defense, has been very highly rated in the NFL right now. Number two is going to be last week's number one. It's going to be the Green Bay Packers taking on the Washington football team. While I love Ricky Seals-Jones, Terry McLaurin's actually been relatively shut down, relatively quiet for the last couple games. There's not a lot of weapons, especially with now an injury to Antonio Gibson. A lot of rumors flying around about Washington and trades. We don't know how that's going to affect Taylor Heinke's mentals. All in all, I don't love the Washington football team in this game. I think Green Bay gets out to a big lead, forces Washington to play from behind. That's going to lead to turnovers. And number one, if you haven't guessed it yet, is going to be the Carolina Panthers taking on the New York Giants. Daniel Jones still turns the ball over. The Giants have no Saquon Barkley and very little firepower on offense. This is the type of game where you're going to see Carolina get after the quarterback three, four, maybe even five sacks, multiple turnovers, and I won't be surprised if they scored another touchdown. So just to recap, my streams of the week are Teddy Bridgewater taking on the Cleveland Browns, Ricky Seals-Jones taking on the Green Bay Packers, and the Carolina Panthers taking on the New York Giants. That's it this week. I hope everything goes well. Please make sure you hit that subscribe button. We're so close to 250 subscribers. Once we hit that milestone, we're going to be doing another subscriber giveaway. 